On the first day of 2023, Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva was sworn in as Brazil's president after one of the most contested elections. He slammed the legacy of his predecessor and rival, Jair Bolsonaro. The last few years, we undoubtedly lived in one of the worst periods in our history, an era of shadows, doubts and a lot of suffering. But this nightmare came to an end with the sovereign vote in the most important election since the country's return to democracy. Just a week later, Bolsonaro's supporters marching in the capital, Brasilia, stormed the Supreme Court, the presidential palace and Congress. It was the beginning of a tumultuous year for the region. Deadly anti-government protests continued in Peru as demonstrators called for the resignation of President Dina Boluarte. She replaced Pedro Castillo in December 2022 when he was ousted from office after announcing he would shutter Congress and rule by decree. Un gobierno de emergencia excepcional. Anti-corruption campaigner Bernardo Arevalo won a landslide victory in Guatemala in August, but becoming president has been far more difficult. Today, we accept with humility the victory the people of Guatemala gave us. The country's highest court upheld a move by prosecutors to suspend his political party over alleged voter registration fraud. In October, Ecuador elected its youngest ever president, 35-year-old Daniel Noboa, who garnered the young vote pledging to create jobs and tackle rocketing violent crime, driven by drug gangs. A month later, Argentinians chose their new leader, Javier Milei, a firebrand libertarian who pledged to take a chainsaw to what he called the bloated state. Sworn in in December, Millet announced a 54% devaluation of the peso as part of economic shock austerity measures. La conclusión es que no hay alternativa a la... There's no other alternative to adjustment and there's no other alternative to shock. Naturally, this will have a negative impact on the level of activity, employment, real wages and poverty levels. He promised to slash electricity and transport subsidies halve the number of government ministries and suspend public works. Meanwhile, 2023 was the world's hottest on record and Latin America saw natural disasters hit the continent. In September, flooding from a cyclone in southern Brazil killed dozens. The onset of the El Nino phenomenon disrupted weather in many places. Marked by above average Pacific Ocean temperatures, it caused heavy rains in some parts of the region but drought in others. Experts warned the climate-driven drought may last until 2026, as it impacted parts of the Andes Mountains chain too. In March, a cyclone in northern Peru sparked the country's worst dengue outbreak on record, infecting more than 220,000 and killing some 380 people. Meanwhile, the long-term economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and a rise in violent crime are driving a migrant crisis across the region. Even more Venezuelans fled home this year. At least seven and a half million now live outside their country, most of them in Latin America. But Ecuadorians became the second largest group of migrants crossing the Darien Gap, as record numbers made the perilous journey from South to Central America. The Texan border town of El Paso reported being, quote, at breaking point as some 2,000 migrants a day crossed from Mexico. We are waiting for them to let us in. I hope they open the door and let us in. Haitians too made up a considerable number of migrants as tens of thousands flee the Caribbean country torn apart by gang warfare. In October, the United Nations Security Council agreed to deploy a multinational force to Haiti to assist the police and help restore order. But as gang terror spreads, the humanitarian situation continues to get worse as the year comes to an end. Dan Collins, CGTN.